Hello and welcome to console training. My name is Alex Hughes and today we've got a really short video just explaining the Grand MA2 web remote. So many people that have been around the MA2 platform for a while will have seen the uh, iPad, iPhone and even the old uh, Compaq iPack app that worked with the MA1 that allowed you to manipulate data away from the desk. Uh, in recent versions of MA2 this function has actually been extended to work on any device via the web browser. So be it an iPad, an Android tablet, an iPhone, a Windows phone, any device that has a web browser that's fairly recent will allow you to function and do some, uh, some really cool things. So I'm going to show you how that's done. We're going to jump into our lovely little MA on PC session here. We're just running the demo, dimmer and more uh, show file today because that's all we require. So we need to firstly work out what our IP address is so we can work that out and put it into our uh, web browser. So if we go to setup, we go to MA network control, we need to make sure that our IP address is an external one so it's not 127.0.0.1. We need to make sure that that IP address is the same that's running sort of on our, uh, on our device. So for example, I've got my phone connected to the wireless network, or in this case, a secondary computer running a web browser, and its IP address is in the same range. So we're just going to make sure that we know that IP address, and then if we key that IP address in, what we'll get is we'll get this nice little splash screen. So I'm going to redo it so we know that that IP address is 10.0.0.444, and we're going to see that it says remotes are disabled. And this also works on consoles. So if we go to global settings and we enable remotes and we come back and we refresh our page, we're going to see that we get a nice little login screen now. Now, by default, the users that are set up in this show file don't include remote. I've added that. Just include administrator. So I could go in right now and I could go administrator and I could type admin and if you're on a tablet or something that's a bit frustrating so normally what I do is I create another user so I'm gonna go here and we're gonna call this new user remote and we're gonna give it a password just so it's secure we're gonna give it the password of remote not the world's most secure password but it's better than nothing now if we set it to have the same user profile as our current user anything that we do on the console will come across to the tablet and vice versa or whatever device you're running this on. Now there are benefits of that. Obviously if you're the uh, one person that just wants to focus a couple of lights, it's really easy to do it like this. However, in uh, corporate situations that I occasionally find myself in, having two users and user profiles set up can be very beneficial if you're doing a focus during rehearsal or something. You can give the person the iPad, tell them to go focus the lights, and then the moment they've gone through and focused all the lights or done whatever they need to do, they can either log in on a different console or you can log in and just store that preset to all that focus or whatever you need to do. So there's benefits to doing both ways, but today we're just going to use one user profile. So now we've got that user set up, we'll go back here and we'll key in that information. So we're going to go remote, remote, and I'm going to change my, uh, my little view. I don't want to save that uh, password. We're just going to go here, and from here I can do the same thing. So if I go fixture 1 through 10, please. We can see that it's selected because we're running the same thing that the uh, console is running and if we go add at, we've got some nice little lines. Now if I click on wheels, I can go to position and I can actually start positioning these fixtures. And if I start using, let's say, let's put them in a color. We'll use the color wheel. So let's put them in uh, green. If I go back to position and go back for a sec, and invoke our lovely highlight function, I can actually go into position and go one by one, change them to fine, and I can start getting a nice little uh, nice little position in here, like so.
So I'm obviously using just a uh, computer to do the web stuff today, but you can obviously use any device you want. What we can also do here is we can see a fixture and channel list. We can even see our group pools. So I could have, instead of typing it all in, I could have called it via the group pool. We can even see our position pool. So if we go clicking through, we can even trigger some playback. Now what if I do this? So if I go back to my console right now and I go to command and I go store, we go to execs and we go here, we'll actually have stored our look. So if I, uh, if I clear our programmer on our MA, we've actually got the look that we created right there. Now, anything that we can do off the desk, we could also do from here. So if I go back to playbacks, we see that this is fader 1, and that's exec 10. Technically, I could type in label exec 1, 10, or label exec 1.10, and because we don't get a prompt, we'll call it test. And here we can see that it's labeled test. So unlike on a console, we don't get a nice little pop-up. The functionality uh, to that sort of sense is fairly basic, but it's still an incredibly powerful feature and one that we will see a lot of in MA3. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been beneficial. Of course, feel free to uh, drop a comment or leave some feedback. Let us know. Uh, let us know how you're going. Let us know if there's any other little features you want us to cover. And uh, yeah, special special shout out to the suggestion that I got from someone to uh, to do this video. Thanks, Mr. Overbeak.